In this video, I'm going to check another GeForce RTX 4070 Ti graphics card, the top gaming OC from ASUS. Now, I've already talked about the 4070 Ti itself in my previous video, so in this one, I'll be just focusing on this tough card in particular and how this card compares to several other 4070 Ti's when it comes to thermals, noise, power, all kinds of different features, and so on. So let's begin. This video is brought to you by Seasonic and their Prime TX power supplies. These fully modular, high quality power supplies are extremely efficient, they are very quiet due to their new hybrid fan control that stops the fans completely under 40% load, they offer a variety of connections for any kind of systems you have in mind, and you even get the new 12 volt high power connection you need for the brand new RTX 4090 graphics cards from Nvidia. They range from 650 watts all the way up to 1600 watts for the biggest enthusiasts out there. And as a nice bonus, you get a cozy 12 year long warranty. Check them out using the links in the description below. The Tough Gaming OC instantly stands out for being a reasonably sized card. Aside from AMD's reference card, the most custom cards that launched in the last few months have been extremely large. Huge coolers made sense on the high power RTX 4090, but they are very much so an overkill on lower power chips like the 4070 Ti. So I'm glad that ASUS didn't copy paste their 4090 and 4080 Tough Cooler, but made this slightly smaller version instead. Instead. And I say slightly because it is still an impressive GPU that is 30 centimeters long and three slots thick. So it is just a little bit easier to fit it in most cases than some of the other cards while still being big enough to look like you have a proper high-end GPU in your system. It is also very well built with a solid all metal shroud and backplate. And I do like this neutral gray color that is easy to mix and match with most other hardware on the market. It just doesn't offer much RGB. Uh, there is a bit of light around the logo, but ASUS is keeping most of that for their ROG lineup. You do get a dual BIOS and a fan stop feature in idle, and you get three display ports and two HDMI 2.1 ports on the back, which is one more than most 4070 Ti's have. For power, it uses a 16 pin 12 volt high power connector and it includes an adapter that requires two 8 pin connectors from your power supply instead of three for the 4080 and four for the 4090. So it is not as bulky as those, but I would still recommend grabbing a native cable or some sort of a fancy custom cable. It will look so much better. In terms of accessories, ASUS also includes this GPU holder that can be used as a screwdriver as well. It is okay for a GPU holder, but it isn't that long, which might be an issue in some cases. Still, it is very nice they included something to hold the GPU straight. Now, before I dive into the performance of this card, let's do a quick recap of the 4070 Ti chip itself and how it compares to the 3080, the 4080, and the 7900 XT. Now, compared to the RTX 3080, the 4070 Ti is a significant upgrade, beating it by 18 to 19% at every resolution. That also puts it comfortably ahead of the 3070 Ti and pretty much anything last gen. But the real challenge comes from the RTX 4080, which is another 18% faster at Quad HD resolution and by even more at 4K resolution. So for any RTX 4070 Ti, it will be very important that the price doesn't get too close to 4080s. Now compared to AMD, the 7900 XT is about 11% faster on 1440p and 15% faster on 4K resolution. But that comparison becomes a bit more complicated once you factor in uh, DLSS, ray tracing, and some of the other issues that we run into with the latest AMD cards. So uh, if you want to know more about that, check my 7900 XT review as well. I will leave the link in the description of this video. On its own though, the RTX 4070 Ti performs objectively well. It offers a proper high refresh rate experience at 1440p and an okay 4K experience as well, that especially so when DLSS is supported. But again, do remember that for 4K resolution, the 4080 is just so much faster. But let's see how this tough gaming compares to some of the other cards I've tested so far. Since there is no Founders Edition, I'm comparing it to the Gigabyte Gaming OC, a Gigabyte Aero, a Palette Game Pro OC, and the MSI Supreme 
X. And in terms of clock speeds, uh, both the primary performance BIOS in the lighter shade and the secondary silent BIOS in the darker shade show speeds of around 2800 MHz. That does put it at the bottom of the graph, even though the differences are very small. There is about 1% of a difference when compared to the MSI and the Aero, and about 2% when compared to the Gaming OC, and 3% when compared to the Palette card. Memory clocks, just like on the 4080s and the 4090s, are exactly the same on all five cards, so there is no memory overclocking out of the factory. Slightly higher boost speeds typically do lead to slightly higher frame rates in games, but the differences here are usually very small. In God of War, the difference between the fastest and the slowest option is three whole frames, which is less than 2%. Even in Doom Eternal, which shows a lot higher frame rates to begin with, the differences are measured in single frames, with barely 1% between them. In Spider-Man, we can see the same story, so out of the box, there is just no way you can tell the difference between any of these cards while gaming. And that is probably for the best, because we've seen that the cards that do try and push for more performance really start losing out with power consumption, which isn't the case right here. I would have liked to see this tough card closer to the 261 watts of the gaming OC, since it generally did have the lowest clocks, but that small gap is probably down to the silicon lottery. All this also means that when you're gaming, the total system power consumption will generally be between 400 to 450 watts, uh, depending on the situation and on your CPU. With a mid-range CPU, you will be fine if you currently own a good quality 550 watt power supply, although if you're buying a new one, I would recommend getting a 650 watt one. And if you're pairing this with a high-end CPU, like a 13900K for example, I would consider getting a 750 watt one instead. But let's look at thermals and noise. Gigabyte is really pushing for extremely low temperatures by raising the fan speed in their default profile, while ASUS, on the other hand, is taking a much more reasonable approach. The TUF is already pretty quiet in its default profile, sitting just under 39 decibels at 50 centimeters distance on an open desk bench. And you can reduce the fan speed even further with the quiet mode, at which point only the much larger MSI Supreme will be quieter. But even 37.7 decibels is excellent if you want a GPU that can do some work without making any real noise. If we look at core temperatures, uh, they're actually very very close to most of the other results, and low 60s are objectively a fantastic result. The same goes for the GPU hotspot temperatures, but the memory temperatures are a little bit higher than on four other cards. Still, even high 60s are more than fine and even impressive considering how much smaller and how much lighter this card is. And if we look at the summary of these results, I'd say that ASUS did very well on balancing the two profiles. I personally like the quiet one a bit more, as it still shows excellent temperatures with minimal noise, but the default performance BIOS is completely fine as well, showing slightly better temps with only a little bit more fan noise. So this tough gaming 4070 Ti OC does well, but since all of them basically did well, the price is going to be a deciding factor. Unfortunately, Nvidia didn't communicate a base MSRP, and ASUS nor any of the others were able to tell me any prices for their own cards either. So we're going to have to wait and see if this 4070 Ti is going to make any sense at all. And if it does, it is up to ASUS to price this particular tough card competitively. Now normally, a tough card should be priced close to the MSRP, and seeing how well it does, especially given the nice form factor it offers, it should be the one to look out for. Anyway, I am going to leave it here. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please do consider clicking that subscribe button if you want more content like this one. And do stay tuned because I have a few more 4070 Ti's to go through today. Bye bye and see you in the next one.